Hi guys, Selena Walker here, naturopath and nutritionist. And today I am making yakon syrup. So we're inside in our cabin and I harvested all the yakon throughout the winter this year. I've done a bit of experiment because I was a bit, to be honest, just exhausted after the growing season. And I just left it in the ground and I thought it'll be fine and it was fine. So I know that you can stagger the season. The, the plants died back, but underneath they were totally fine so the pan obviously wants to be talked about <laughs> shouting at me the pan i'm going to be using is quite a big pan now you want to use a pan where you're only going to fill halfway with the yakon juice to start with but when you bring it to the boil it raises quite a lot and almost doubles in quantity and believe me from speaking from experience you do not want it to boil over you'll be scrubbing that cooker for days so I'm using my kombucha pan you can see it's got a good tea stain in there from making my kombucha coming to the yakon so this has been stored for for a couple of months some of it now I've got a couple of sacks in so I've just emptied one of the sacks here and some of it has gone wrinkly from being stored. If there's any bits that have gone rotten, I'm just gonna chop those off. Sometimes the ends start to go a bit. Now what you can do is chop this up so it can get into the juice machine. And it's up to you whether you want to leave the skin on or not. I like to keep the skin on because my belief is that lots of nutrients in fruit and vegetables is close to the skin. So I wanna keep all that yummy goodness in it. But if you were someone that likes to save the fiber when you juice in to make crackers and things like that or flour, then the skin can sometimes be a bit tough and also it can be a bit bitter. So you might decide to take that off. If you leave the skin on, you want to be working with yak on that has been pre-washed. So what I tend to do when I get this in from the field is I'll wash it outside and then I wash it inside again. Now the downside of that is you have to have space and you have to dry it for quite some time. Because if you don't, like this one obviously hasn't been, you can see what happens. That was one that was cut and broken and I was just hoping for the best. So that one will not be juiced. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is simply cut these up, get them through the juice machine and get the juice into here. And then let's make syrup and also learn about why yakon syrup is so, so good. So you roughly need around 10 kilos for one liter of syrup, roughly around two and a half kilos for 250 mils. So get growing and get juicing. Okay guys, so I've juiced that. It's just past my four liter kombucha line mark on the pan. So it's probably about four and a half liters has gone into here. And I think I put about 10 kilos in each sack. So we'll have to work that out later. We. So that's what the juice looks like. You can see it's almost black, isn't it? That black color. Now, when you first juice yak on, it's more of a kind of medium brown, maybe a beigey color when it comes out, but as soon as it hits oxygen, it goes black. So don't be alarmed by that. It will oxidize very quickly. So I'm just gonna put that last drop in, pop that over there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this on the large flame, let it come to a rolling boil and then leave it on a medium heat so it's continually rolling and I'll show you what that looks like for a good few hours until it reduces down and it's yummy and delicious and thick. So this has just come up to a rolling boil, well, you can see it rolling but also the steam is on the camera and you can see the froth, there's a bit of a scummy froth start to form. I'll scoop off the scummy froth and then just leave it boiling away until it starts to reduce and what that means is until the liquid starts to become a smaller quantity and becomes thicker. Okay, so this has been at it now for four hours and you can see, hopefully, the texture has really changed. It's starting to really thicken up now. So it's not going to be much longer. My experience is it's usually between four and five hours. Okay, so this is pretty much done now. If you can see at the side, the mark, so that's kind of where it started. I firstly left the scummy mark there so I can show you. And that is where it's ended up. So it's considerably less. You know when it's done, so you kind of get this circle of bubbles. And then when I stir it, you can see it's a lot thicker. And another way I, I know that it's done is if I draw a line, it doesn't instantly 
pull in the line stays there now i could make this thicker and allow it to go thicker but what i find is if i allow it to go too thick when i put it into my bottles it doesn't come out so i'm gonna bottle this into a sterilized bottle and i'll show you how that goes okay so i've got my sterilized bottle and a funnel and i'm simply gonna pour in let's see how much is there let me get the pan Carefully checking that it's not going to over go from the top. Right, there's some delicious syrup in there. So I'm just going to get a silicone spatula, which is great to scrape the goodies. And I'm going to, let's see, yeah, that really scrapes it from the bottom. So you'll be able to see how much extra we get in. That was worth it, wasn't it? <laughs> and also you can lick the pan afterwards. So that's batch number one done. I'm gonna save that to test it in a bit. The worst thing about making yakon syrup is that it sticks everywhere. So you do have to be careful and wipe everything down loads and loads of times. So I've got an, about another four batches of this to do and I'm hoping I will end up, this is, um, I think that's half a litre, these are the half litre jars I've got. So I'm hoping I'll end up with about two or three litres, which would be a good amount of syrup for us to have here in the house. So I'm just gonna pop that into the sink and get the scissors, Let's get a new top out. And this, as it cools down now, will set and be a lot harder. So, there we go. That's our first bottle of Yakon syrup. Hey guys, so I've just made another batch of Yakon. I just wanted to come on to show you some of the Yakon that I've made. So, I've made it in these jars this time, rather than the bottles. And the reason that is, is because yakon gets very thick. So in the winter here, sometimes in some sections of our kitchen, it's not that warm, which is great because they keep things cool because we haven't got a fridge because we live off grid and we haven't got enough power in the winter. But it was getting quite frustrating getting the last bit out of the bottle. So this batch, not only did I bottle it up slightly thinner, but I put it in my little screw top mason jars so I can just simply scoop it out with a spoon. And this one here, which I haven't opened yet, can you see, it's kind of, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see that, but it's not watery, but if I was to stick the spoon in, it would slowly drip off. And I find that much better consistency. And that's the key thing. If you have it too watery, it's not gonna taste too much and it's not gonna last long. So you want to evaporate off the water so it lasts longer now i've never done an experiment on this i've read places that last up to 12 months but it never lasts that long here you know my goal is to be able to make enough to last a season until the next batch is ready but hopefully that's inspired you to grow yakon i'll put the links in below to my other videos about yakon because it's one of my favorite plants and i have lots of different resources about it so i'll add them underneath and get growing yakon it's the plant that keeps giving the syrup is full of prebiotics to feed the good gut bacteria, it's suitable for diabetics because it goes through the, through the digestive system without spiking the blood sugar. So it's an amazing resource and we can grow our own syrup. How cool is that? So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really, really helps me. I know you must hear everybody say that, but it does. It super helps promote the channel and get this information out there. So I really appreciate you doing that. You can also head on over to my website, selenawalker.earth, and sign up to my free newsletter for hints and tips on how you can create a healthy body, a healthy mind, and a healthy planet. I'll see you soon.